Okay, this video is going to be on how to effectively use the space that you have for gardening. My first experience with gardening um, was three years ago, and it began with a little bitty space right here. It was three foot by three foot, so essentially nine square feet. Um, and then I added a little bit more onto it at the next season, and then added more and more until I ended up with a backyard where I ripped up all of our ornamentals, including trees, and put in um, raised beds, brought in some really good compost, mulch uh, for the soil, and created these raised beds that you see. And so now all I have to do after three years is I just continue to add compost and mulch and all kinds of good ingredients. I, don't, I try not to use any fertilizers, um, simply because I don't like to use chemicals in my garden. That's the whole point here is to have the freshest, um, most delicious fruit and vegetables out of my backyard. So down here I have an orange tree that almost died last year. It got so cold, but we also had a drought here in the south. Um, I've got lots of tomatoes, watermelon, potatoes, squash, zucchini, lima beans, snow peas, potatoes. I've also got some black eyed peas back there on that trellis. We added trellis along the fence line as much as we could because uh, that's another way that you can um, have lots of things growing in a small space. Here, mixed in with all my corn are some weeds. Those weeds will not be here very soon because I'm getting ready to go crazy and start ripping them all out. But we started with corn this year. I've never grown corn in my backyard, but my neighbor, who is just on the other side of this fence here, threw some corn in the ground last year and he said he had tons of corn come up. So I thought, what the heck, I'll give it a try. I've got my roses because I do still like to have a beautiful garden. In between those roses there I have potatoes. I've got some peppers that managed to survive the drought and the freeze last year. That one is recovering from an insect infestation. And the way I treat my insects is with a product called Thieves, which you can get through Young Living. And I will put a link down below for that. Um, it is all natural and it's great for disease, insects. Um, it is also great for cleaning your house. Because it is all natural and it's essential oils, you can also drink it. Um, uh, I use Thieves for sore throats cleaning my house, taking care of some insects in the garden. But I also use a product called Diatomaceous Earth, and that helps to keep snails and other things out of my garden. There's some more bell peppers there, some spring peppers, which are delicious, more corn. Right here you can see a cucumber growing. That is a volunteer. Because I use heirloom seeds, I only use heirloom seeds. Um, I can just take the seeds from last year's plants and reseed again. But this is funny story because this just popped up. I had cucumbers growing here last year. This trellis was covered in cucumbers. I was giving them away. I was making pickles. I mean, you name it. I, we had so many cucumbers, we had them coming out, of the, out my ears. So this one just decided it's going to volunteer today. And I'm not even going to, I mean, this year, I'm not even going to plant cucumbers again because that one, those, actually, there's two there. Those two cucumber plants will give us all that we need because they're heirloom. It's a good quality. It came back on its own, and it is covered already in yellow blooms. I need to get that growing on that vine. we got more potatoes. i got some lima beans back there in the back that my mom gave me from her garden. got some more corn. This is going to be where my apple tree is going to get planted. Then I've got green beans because we love them so much. I have tons of green beans growing there. And then I've also got raspberries and blackberries, some herbs, and then more more potatoes back here that we just planted today. I just kind of half-heartedly threw them in the ground, which is pretty much my whole method. I don't give my gardening a whole lot of thought. I did all of that in the beginning when I put in my flower beds. And um, I still stick to that philosophy. I think if you put the hard work in and the investment up front in good beds and good soil, you don't have to have a green thumb because the earth does everything you need. God created our planet to produce for us. We just have to take advantage of it. So over here I have lots of pots and that are full of fruit trees. My fruit trees are all dwarf trees because um, I intend to keep them in pots. I like to do the Mediterranean patio gardening. So I've got herbs and fruit trees. We've got pears, figs, lemon, lime, apples, lots of herbs, rosemary. I've got a bay leaf over here. And I've got some St. John's warts and some other really good herbs that are great for medicinal uses. And then I've just got all my pretty things over here, my ornamentals that I just like to be surrounded with pretty flowers. And a hibiscus that 
after three years of droughts and freeze, still comes back. <laughs> Can't kill the thing if I wanted to. So, square foot gardening consists of a raised bed, really good soil. You can find the recipe for the soil mix online or also in a book called Square Foot Gardening um, by a guy named Mel something, I can't remember. But anyways, I started with his book. Most uh, really good nurseries will sell the mix already mixed up for you. Okay, here I have two different composting bins. The square one I started with, hate it, but still continue to use it. And then I have the rotating one, which is my favorite because it just is so much easier to get the compost out of. Okay. Raised garden garden beds can be done with wood. We recycled this wood from a, our deck when we ripped it up. Um, or you can just pile high your compost or your soil and then uh, let Mother Nature do its course. My dogs have obviously been back there. You can see where they've trampled. I need to get that little fence back up over here. They... Um, they think I do all this for them. So I have to put these little fencing, these little white fences up. You can see them here to keep my dogs out. Okay, so gardening is not hard. You just got to put the time and the investment up front in a good bed, good soil, and then you got to have good seeds. I have all my seeds in here. They're all heirloom seeds. I buy most of my seeds through uh, Burpee and also rareseeds.com. And then I have a little potting bench here that my husband uh, decided he would build for me to help make my life easier and I'm so thankful for that and I do all my gardening here I start with these seed pots that are left over from um, some of the flowers that we put up in the front and then I just put them in here fill it with some soil and then drop my seeds in there um, it's important to have some labels some some little things that you can label your your seeds with so that you know what's what um, and that's pretty much it. Gardening is a no-brainer. just needs to have good soil, good seeds, lots of sunlight, and some water. Um, I would definitely recommend that you not do what I did the first year, which was I buried all of the sprinkler heads. <laughs> I didn't have any help. I was pretty much on my own with this project. I, I was met with a lot of opposition because my husband likes an ornamental backyard. He likes to look at it and enjoy all the beautiful flowers and stuff. And I figure if we're going to put all that work into it, I want to be able to eat it. So I ripped everything out and put in the square foot beds, the raised beds on my own. And because I didn't have any help or guidance, I accidentally buried all the sprinkler heads. So I had to come out here every single day and water these plants. Um, after, even with just my minimal knowledge and experience and a whole lot of effort and sitting out here getting eaten up by mosquitoes, um, even with that, I had a huge uh, harvest my first year. And so my sweet husband came out here the next year and dug up all those sprinkler heads and <laughs> put the, the raised sprinkler heads. You can see one back there. Right there. Came back in here and put in the raised, the raised sprinkler heads for me. And I cannot tell you what a blessing that is because I do not have to come out here and water now, except strategically, because some of these plants have gotten so big, like those tomato bushes in the back there, and then these squash and zucchini plants, they are blocking the flow from the sprinkler. So I have to come out here and water my watermelon and my potatoes over there in the middle, um, because the, the plants are blocking the spray. So now I come out here and I water a couple times a week, um, and that's it. That's pretty much all I have to do now because I, I put the time and the effort in in the beginning. Um, and if you go to my blog, which is www.prudentwoman.wordpress.com, I will have posted on there the pictures from my very first experience in putting these flowers, I mean these, these beds in. Um, it was a lot of work, but I was able to do it in two days. Two days. So, and I will show you the pictures from that. So, anyways, if you would like to start a garden, enjoy the bounty of fresh fruits, organic fruit and vegetable out of your backyard, it's possible. You just have to be willing to go out there and put the work in. So, God bless you. Be a prudent woman and provide some delicious and nutritious food conveniently from your backyard. God bless you.